This is the 2024 Polaris Expedition XP North Star. It might be one of the best rigs we've driven all year. We're going to take you behind the wheel and show you everything that sets this rig apart from everything else on the market. Then we're going to show you five things we love and five things we hate about this machine. Finally, we're going to tell you who this side-by-side -side is for and if you should spend $38,999 on one. So first things first, a sealed cab on a side-by-side -side is nothing new, but on most machines, those feel like an afterthought because they are afterthoughts. Engineers design the rig and then a different team of guys comes up with how to put a windshield and a roof and doors on the thing. It might not always feel like one seamless design. This isn't that. All of this feels like it belongs here. The doors open nice and solid. There's a nice headliner. It just feels like one cohesive piece in a way that we really haven't seen on a side-by-side -side before. And overall, the interior is way nicer than what we're used to seeing on lower buck utility and rec ute machines. I mean, look at these seats. They're super comfortable. They're adjustable for and after. You're not stuck with like the one size fits all church pew design. And the side by side industry has been trotting out phrases like automotive grade for years now. The truth is, this isn't as nice as even the cheapest car on sale today, but it is a massive step up for side by sides. And nice as this is, you can still take a pressure washer to it. Try that in your Tacoma. There's also a lot of flexibility here glass windscreen with a windshield wiper and washer, but that windshield still opens up, which is great for nice days. You could spend all day inside this interior and be comfortable while you do it. A lot of that comes down to just how well the HVAC system works. Chilly spring day here in East Tennessee, and we've been warm and dry all day long. Like the cab, this thing doesn't feel like an add-on because it's not. Polaris knew this thing was going to have HVAC from the word go and built the rest of the rig around it. Likewise, Polaris is no stranger to an excellent stereo, but the JBL system in this thing is particularly nice. A lot of that probably comes down to the fact that the audio isn't just getting blasted out into space, but is confined to the cab. Still, you've got multiple speakers, including these little tweeters up here. It works really, really well. It's also got speed sensitive volume, so the faster you go, the louder it gets. It works Works extremely well. And of course, the industry leading ride command is here to make sure we don't get lost, we stay entertained, and connected with everybody else on our ride. Everywhere you look, there are really nice, really high quality details inside and out. These projection lens LED headlights look like what you'd find on an Escalade. At night, they provide super clear, super bright light that makes the expedition immediately recognizable on the trail and really maximizes your visibility. There are also a billion accessories you can bolt to this rig, including a rooftop tent. This rig came loaded up with this bed box, an implement holder, and a bed extender, all of which is super easy to install and uninstall thanks to these extruded aluminum bed rails. Laris has made a bunch of noise about this being an adventure side-by-side, -side, and that's probably true of the big ADV model, but really at its core, the XP is a rec ute rig, and it might be one of the best on the market right now. Look, we hooked a parts car to this thing, towed it around, didn't even feel it, and that's in part because this thing can tow up to 2,000 pounds. You can also put 600 pounds in the bed. So for perspective, the General can carry the same amount of stuff in its bed, but the Expedition can tow 500 pounds more. The Expedition's bed and towing capacity also match the Yamaha R-Max blow for blow. A lot of that comes down to the machine's engine. There's a 999cc parallel twin with 114 horsepower back here. That is way more power than almost everything else on the market. It's more than the R-Max, it's more than the General, it's more than the Can-Am Commander. There's only one rig that makes more power, and that's the new Kawasaki Ridge at 116 horsepower power, but two horsepower is not enough to brag about. Part of what makes that engine so usable is the fact that Polaris gave the Expedition three drive modes. Sport is super spicy with immediate throttle response, really kind of perfect for wide open terrain. Standard is kind of ideal for the type of riding we do out here on the East Coast, where you've got a mix of wide open spaces, gravel, little obstacles, stuff like that. Comfort is really perfect for loading onto a trailer or tackling bigger obstacles. And that big parallel twin is bolted to a traditional CVT, which works fine. You also get four-wheel drive with a locking front differential and turf mode, which is super handy for rec ute rigs. You're not going to tear up your field. You're not going to tear up your grass. But really where this thing shines is on the trail, and that should come as no surprise. The suspension is great with Fox 2.0 Podium QS3 shocks up front and 2.5s in the back. And Polaris designed this thing to be flexy with long travel suspension front and rear. The company says there's 14 inches of travel up front and 15 inches of travel in the rear. Those numbers are right on top of one of the flex
flexiest machines we have ever tested, the Yamaha R-Max. Numbers are really close together. You also get plenty of ground clearance. Flair says there's 14 inches down there. Part of that is thanks to these 30 inch Pro Armor Crawler XP tires. Let's go ahead and get into the five things we love about this rig. And of course, we're gonna start with the cab. It feels great to finally get into a side-by-side -side that feels secure and substantial with great HVAC, power windows, and a banging stereo. You also get lockable doors. The second thing we love, these headlights, they really give the machine a premium feel, and man, the visibility is great when the sun goes down. Would we bolt a light bar to the X-Ped? Yeah, of course we would, but you don't really need it. The third thing we love, this suspension. Fox always does the Lord's work when it comes to shock. It is no different here. These QS3s handle whatever you want to throw at the Expedition, which means you can cover some serious ground at speed. And because of all that travel, the Expedition feels really stable over technical stuff. That Goldilocks setup is really hard to hit, but Polaris nailed it with the Expedition. The fourth thing we love, this lock and ride system. There's no fumbling with screws, no finding the right tools. You just drop this stuff in, drop down those anchors, you're good to go. It also makes the Expedition really flexible with minimal fuss. I know a lot of automotive manufacturers that could take a page out of Polaris's book when it comes to accessories. The fifth thing I love is how this thing feels. It feels like a little pickup truck because that's kind of what it is. I want to take this thing hunting. I want to take it fishing. I want to spend a day poking around the woods. It feels like that key that unlocks all of the good stuff I like to do outdoors. And well, that's kind of what Polaris sells it as. So what about the stuff that we hate? Number one thing, the expedition is tough to see out of, especially out the rear. Backing up is an exercise in faith in Braille. Doubly true because that bed extender means the rear view camera only gives you a great view of the ground and nothing else. The second thing we hate about the Expedition is it is loud inside the cabin. We like a little bit of engine noise as much as the next guy, but the din at wide open throttle is insane. On most side-by-sides, that's not really an issue because all of the noise goes out into the world, but in a sealed cab like this, where you've got a lot of reflective surfaces, it really makes a difference. The next thing we hate is sort of a double feature. It's partly this console. You know, it, it's a really nice made design. It looks really watertight. It's locking, that's awesome. But it looks like you'd push this to open it. You don't, you really gotta yeah, yard on the, oh no. You really got a yard on that sucker to get it open. Made worse by the fact that this thing comes with three different keys. You've got your ignition key, you've got one of these keys for the center console, and you've got another for the doors. One key to rule them all really would make this thing a lot nicer. Finally, the fifth thing we hate about the Expedition is the price. It's not like I don't think it's worth $40,000. It's just a lot of money for a rec ute rig. If you're running a massive hunting ranch out in in Texas or Canada somewhere, and you've got clients you've got to run out to the hunting blind first thing in the morning, this is the machine you want. But 40 grand's a stack of money, and I don't have that kind of cash, which is a shame because I really want this machine. It's like a CJ5 and a K truck had a baby with superpowers. All of that brings us to who is this machine for? This thing is the absolute king of rec ute machines, which means it is perfect for someone who has actual work to do around a piece of property, but also wants to use their machine to get out and have a good time, whether that's wheeling or hunting or camping. It's enclosed cab and excellent HVAC also means it's ideal for extreme environments. Over 100 degrees, or if you live somewhere where you see below freezing more often than above freezing, Expedition's your rig. Last, this thing is for the guy for whom price is no object. If you have to have the absolute nicest machine out there, you're not going to top the Expedition. Hope you enjoyed this review. Check us out over at UTV Driver. We're going to have a full gallery, a written review, all that fun stuff up over at UTVDriver.com. We'll see you there.